الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, many of you may have already heard news may have reached you Ustad Ismail Beaumont from Little Maysour and Maysour Arabic He passed away uh, from cancer May Allah Azza wa Jal have mercy on him Many of you may be familiar with him because you've directly been in contact with his da'wah and his teaching Many of you may have heard about him from the Child My Bite episode that we did about him in 2020 there's a lot that I'd like to mention, but one thing that I want to focus on uh, His family now, he's left behind uh, a wife and he's left behind children that are orphans There's a fundraising link that's going around and I'd like you guys to donate to it Before you donate to it, I want to play you a clip where we talked about his children And we talked about a poem that he wrote Where in this poem he's speaking to one of his children who grew up without him because he died And it's like an imaginary conversation between their father who's deceased and this daughter of his who's grown up without the father that has all these questions. So I'd like you guys to watch this clip. To me, there's a verse that comes to the Quran uh, that comes to mind in the Quran. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he talks about he talks to the guardians of the orphans. Oh, uh, Allah said, Allah uh, says to the to the guardians of the children, uh, you know. Basically, in other words, imagine yourself to be in the shoes of the one who's dying. Their children that they're going to leave behind are weak. As in, they're scared for their kids. As in, this person's on his deathbed, and this person's the guardian who's going to take care of the orphans. Imagine you in the shoes of this person, and you were looking at your kids who you are about to leave as orphans, and they're weak, and you're so scared. Like, who's going to take care of my kids? Does that make sense? Mm. The Prophet's got Allah back. Many kids, may Allah, may Allah preserve him and protect his kids and mm. his, his family, his wife, and you know, all of them. I mean, mm. and I just, you know, like, bro, those kids, who's going to raise, I think no one's going to raise your kids the way you are going to raise them. No one's going to take care of your children the way you take care of your children. How many how many times have we seen children who have righteous mums, but then the fathers are absent and it goes all haywire? Like, his kids, he calls to the sunnah, he's in da'wah, he's still on knowledge, he's translated some of the works of scholars. He's a brother of khair. And you know, when you're not dealing with cancer, you have freedom to do more khair. I'm saying, look at how productive he's been in da'wah with this. Imagine how he could be without this. So it really affected me mm. personally. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't want like another uh, another person that I know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Who Especially when there's something we could have done. That we could have done. Yeah. And what is it that we can do? And um, this is one of those situations where, you know, everyone talks about Islamic brotherhood, Islamic brotherhood. This, he's your brother, isn't it? At the end of the day. It's like, how, it's like your own brother, literally like your own brother. If you had cancer, what would you do? Maybe we can, if we're going to end, inshallah ta'ala, before one final reminder, to please donate the link below. And also to sign up to his Arabic program. So maybe we can end with this poetry that he, you know, he made a little poetry mm-hmm. where he's having a conversation with his daughter as a dead man And I think he made it so His daughter If he was to die When she grows up And she wonders What happened to my dad She can Listen to this poetry As in he said it to you Or it's, or it's, or it's, it's on his, it's on his yeah, Instagram it's like Basically He's making it Oh wow While he's alive so yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So that if he dies, it's like the final video that Ali Banat did. If you if you guys are watching this, on would yeah, but he done it. So it's like things, for his daughter, things that she would ask, like Dad, where were you? Like you said, you were gonna be around, you know them kind of things. So like things that kids yeah, ask, in it. Five year old kid. So, shall I watch that part? I'm saying you help a believer. Allah, you don't understand. It's heavy in Allah. Before Allah, it's heavy for him. To see like, Allah rewards is heavily, you know what I'm saying? Now, when I wrote this piece, I had been working on it for a few days. And honestly, it left me emotionally drained. This poem is entitled Familiar Stranger. I decided to let my thoughts run wild and create an imaginary scenario in my mind. Whereby my youngest daughter, Hannah, currently five years old, meets a stranger in a place, but not of this world. However... In this written piece, she's now 25 years old. She's a good soul. She's polite. She's courteous. But she's still carrying some childhood trauma, which she has never addressed. In this piece, I take you through her emotional state as she re-engages 
in an unusual encounter with this stranger. Pay attention. Hello, what's your name? Your face looks awfully familiar. I think I know you. You look like a man I used to know, but he was taller and kind of skinnier. Yeah. yeah. You seem like you're lonely here all alone, and I recall him always busier. Why are you by yourself? It deeply yourself? pains me when I stop and think about him, so I try to forget, because it's easier. It hurts too much. He vanished one day and never returned. The void, still it burns. Ouch. A familiar stranger. That's exactly what he is. A title he has earned. I used to think about him much, but over the years it's kind of settled down. I sometimes think how life would have been different had he been around. But he's not. I remember he used to call me princess and say, one day I'll wear a crown. You wore a crown, baby. But he lied to me, because since the day he left, he's yet to be found. Where's he gone? Why would he go and leave us all alone? Mom didn't take it well. I, ain't got a clue. I didn't know if she was hurting because of the pain or angry at him. It was hard to tell. So confusing. So confusing. How old were you when this event happened? I was a little girl. I must have been about, mm, let me think, mm. about five. Yeah. Do you think he's still alive? Alive. 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 If you would please allow me to politely offer my suggestions. I think I'm able to offer some closure for some, for some unanswered, unanswered questions. questions. The man you speak about, I know him well. But what, what you failed to, to mention, that when he left you and your mum alone, it, it wasn't, wasn't his, his, intention. Intention. his intention. Now you're old enough to understand that life. life doesn't always go to plan. And everything you think you know about that man, please, please understand. understand. He was protecting you and would sacrifice the world oh. so he could hold your hand. But he was diagnosed with cancer which slowly spread into his other, other glands. glands. He never lied to you when he said one day you'll be, be, a, a, queen. Queen. be a queen. But I didn't tell you that. Let me finish. Please. You'll understand what I mean. <clears throat> he did everything he could and changed his diet, hoping, hoping, it, would work. hoping it would work. And tried everything. to minimize the pain you felt, but couldn't avoid the hurt. He tried. He, he tried. told me personally to tell you that he's sorry. And for what it's worth... He just couldn't bear the thought of you having to see him, buried, under dirt. He kept himself busy and chose to live his life in a hurry. Wanted to accumulate enough money so you and your mum would never have to worry. Never. He may have messed up as a father, but please, don't see him as your enemy. Please. He told me his biggest regret is that he never spent more time on creating memories. Excuse me, mister. I apologize. I don't, I don't recall, recall your, your, name. Name. Call your name. Your words are deeply, deeply powerful. Deeply. They, they help, help release my pain. Mm. Mm. Things may not be making much sense right now, and I know it's hard for you to see. 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 But that man you've grown to hate so much, unfortunately, unfortunately. is me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Brothers and sisters, after watching that heart-touching clip, hopefully you would want to help the family. A couple of the things that I'd like you to do is make dua for him and his family, his janazah is going to be announced. Please make as much effort as you can to turn up to his janazah. It will be on his Instagram and the Instagram's on screen. They're gonna announce it there inshallah ta'ala when it's gonna be. Uh, also, his courses online and his toys that he made for children, uh, educational toys and games, benefit from that. Arabic, Islamic studies. You can go to Little Maisur or Maisur Arabic and you can actually learn from his, what he taught, especially Arabic studies, where it's phenomenal the way he taught stuff for children, even stuff for adults. That way he gets the reward of the da'wah that he did carrying on and you get to benefit from that. And I'm sure that the funding and what you pay for the courses would go towards helping his family as well. And finally, I'm going to be doing a lecture this week at Matik in the Masjid, reflections and lessons from the death of Ustad Ismail. And I'd like you guys to attend. Uh, when people pass away, it's a reminder for us. And there are lessons to be taken from that. When the Salaf would hear about the passing of someone, and Hassan al-Basri would say, when I used to hear about someone that passed away, it would make me a better person because I know I'm next. So there's many lessons that we can take from the passing of a person, especially Ustad Ismail, his life, the way he lived. I wasn't from the closest people to him, but I was a big supporter of his work. There are personal reflections I have taken from his journey, his fight, his passing. 
that I think will be very beneficial for all of us and a big wake up call for all of us. So I'd like you guys to make sure you attend the lecture on Saturday as well. The link to uh, the details of the lecture are going to be released in the Telegram group below. So the action points from this video are to donate uh, because the breadwinner in their family has now passed away. The second thing is to make dua for him and his family. The third thing is turn up to the janazah and on the Instagram the details will be released inshallah ta'ala. The fourth thing is look at his courses online and look at the toys and the games that he made for the children. Hugely beneficial. Mm -hmm. And the fifth thing is come to the Matthew and the Mission lecture, look at the uh, Telegram link below, join it and hopefully you turn up inshallah ta'ala. With that said my beloved brothers and sisters share this video, all the information is below. سبحانك اللهم بالحمد لله شهدنا لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وتوبيك السلام عليكم.